Hi Floss Tube, it's Helen D. Today I am going to show you how I finish a pillow with your stitched piece, a little peak of rickrack, and then a fabric panel on the bottom. I find this is a nice way to give a piece that might be a little smaller, a little more of an oomph, a little more oomph, so that when you stand it up in a bowl or something, it makes it just a little bit bigger and adds a little something to it. So what I have is basically what you're doing you make a front, you make the front panel and then you do your finish as if it were a regular old pillow finish like I did the video with this piece where I just showed if you just have stitching and you want to finish it that's what you do it's the same thing we're gonna make a panel front panel and then you'll finish it the exact same way that I finished this piece so I have a couple things kind of already started to save me from having to get up this is the piece that I'm going to work on. This is this Witch Can Stitch. It's a piece that Carla at Cobweb Corner designed. Um, this is actually hers. She sent it to me and I told her I'd finish it up. So I haven't cut this, but I have ironed a piece of interfacing on the back. I like to use the Pellin 950F fusible interfacing. So I've ironed a piece on the back. Typically when I do a pillow, I like to leave three quarters of an inch around all sides when I cut my fabric. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to measure. Again, this is my quilting ruler that has the lines on it. So I'm going to measure to this quarter line past the inch. And then I know when I cut up here, I'll have three quarters left. So on a stitched piece like this, I have to kind of line it up and her witch hat is one row lower than these pumpkins. So I could use the trick where I pull a line of the fabric out, but I'm just going to eyeball it right down that line of stitching. Cut that off. And then we'll do the same thing over here. This one's a little tricky because it's way up here. And then the final side. So three quarters of an inch around all four sides. So now I need my bottom piece of fabric and I chose these bats and again I just cut a piece ironed some interface into it but I haven't trimmed it up so what I usually do with this I don't care so much right now about the extra length or about how messy it is on the bottom what I need is a straight edge so I'm gonna lay this on my board and this one because I can go by this line right here by the selvage, I'm going to put that, actually I'm going to trim my selvage off and then I know I'll have a straight line there. I'm going to line that straight line up to one of my lines on my board, doesn't matter which one, and get my fabric a little over, these boards have that cross inch line, so I want it a little over there so that then when I line this up, three on the bottom, three on the top. I'm trimming off all that extra and I'll have a nice straight line on the top. So now I have one straight line on the top. This line is straight, doesn't really matter because this is what I'm going to sew up here so that I know it's straight. And then my rick rack, I'm using this black. This one's from Lady.Creates. I'm just going to go in and snip a piece that is a little longer than my stitched piece. So it's just going to be a little bit longer than my stitching. So now I need to layer them up so that I will have 
my rickrack, and then my fabric kind of going on. So I'm going to make one more cut. I just told you <laughs> I like to do three quarters of an inch around, but when I'm adding a trim, I start with three quarters around. Then I go in with my actual trim and I think, because I sew this right on the bottom edge, if I sew this right there, is that to me too much, too much here showing? In this case, I actually don't think it is. Sometimes if it is, like in this one, my rickrack was way down here and there was just too much fabric showing here. So what I did is I went in on this piece and I trimmed off another quarter of an inch on the bottom. So that then when I lay this on, it bumped it up a quarter of an inch and made it nice and tight against that fabric. Like I said, for this one, I don't mind that. I don't mind that it's a little, a little further down. So I'm gonna leave it. So, pull my sewing machine up. And I'm actually going to switch my thread. So, I am using a thread that will match my stitching. In this case, I have black in my bobbin, and now I have black in my regular spool. doesn't want to play nice. There we go. Okay, so I'm all loaded up. So I'm going to take a couple of clips, wonder clips, and I'm going to take this and line this rickrack up right to the bottom and just clip it a couple times to hold in place. Now this rickrack is not very thick so what I need to do is I need to sew in order to have enough show I need to sew just barely along these edges to make it stay in place. So in order to do that, I actually use my zipper foot. And the reason I do is my zipper foot is clear. Your regular foot might be clear. I use a clear foot so that I can see exactly where that line is going. So now I'm gonna go in and I'll have to kind of show you once it's on there. Um, and I'm gonna lay my needle so that it's just maybe an eighth of an inch. to hold those on. And I'm just gonna go right across. It's a little slower than your normal sewing. Actually, this is gonna catch if I don't pull it through a little. So I'm gonna take my time and go right along. And hold this kind of down in place as I go. getting my threads out of there. So I sewed that on like you can see just kind of catching those bottom edges all the way across and I tried to keep it with that bottom wave right along the edge of my fabric. So now what I do is I'm gonna lay this down so that it's face up and those rickrack is on the top. 
Then I'm going to take my interfaced backing fabric, which is, it will be my backing fabric, but it's my bottom panel. That straight edge that we cut, I'm going to line right up on the edge of my fabric, and again, put a couple clips in there. Okay, then flip it over and just double check that it's nice and straight. So now I'm going to sew with this side on the front so that I can see this line. Because what I need to do is now I went in an eighth of an inch, now I'm going to come in a quarter of an inch so that I'm covering that sewing line and that will sew, sandwich everything together. So I'm going to come over here. This one's going to move down some away. Now at this point I could switch back to my other foot, but I kind of like, I like to see that I'm going the same distance from this line. So I'm going to go on my machine, that's right here. And again, I kind of take my time on this one a little bit. Feel like I was a little off there on the end. The good thing about this is if you are a little off you still have a chance to then go in and sew back over it and straighten it out if you need to. So let's see. So now when I fold that open I'll kind of finger press it down to see how does it look. Mine looks pretty good. Are they all even? No. Once you kind of get it sewn on there, you're not going to notice. I do try and make sure that I got, that I don't have any of these little dips showing, right? That I've, I've covered all those up. Like there I thought I did, but it's bat size. So I flipped this over and I'm going to just go press it down. So I pressed it right down. This one's a little off-putting because this is closer, so there's less room here than here. But once it's all finished up, it's going to be great. So now I have that sewn on. What I need to do is square this up to make the rest of my panel. So I take my ruler. I know that this edge is straight because we cut it straight. So that's what I'm going to line up on my board. And then I'll lay this on top and cut right down. And then I'm going to flip it over and do my other edge first. Again, I know that one is straight, so that's what I'm going to lay down. And then finally, I need to decide how much of this do I want showing. Typically, let's see on this one, I think I leave about two and a half, three inches. This one has about two and a half showing, which would mean I'd need to cut it about two and three quarters. So let's see what that would look like here. So for this, I'm going by this line right here is my straight line and I'm going to line it up kind of with the one and then if I hold this on I can say all right well if it's one one two if I cut it to here that's what three inches would look like 
Is that too much? To me that looks pretty good. If I cut it three inches, then I know when I sew it up I'm going to lose another quarter of an inch. So to me that looks about right. So I'm going to cut that right off. And there's my panel. So I have my stitching, my rickrack, my fabric. So now I would take this piece and treat it just like a regular piece of stitching. Meaning I'll now take this piece, this dimensions, put it on my backing fabric, cut around my backing fabric, iron interfacing on the backing, put them right sides together, sew them up, turn them inside out, trim them, stuff them. So now, now this panel is my front piece. You can, if you want, trim some of this excess off. I find it doesn't bother me because it's not in a corner, it's on the sides. Um, so sometimes I'll hit it when I'm stuffing. I'll kind of poke up there and hit it, but it's no big deal. So there is this Witch Can Stitch with its peak of rickrack and its bottom panel ready to be stitched into a full pillow.